It's been an unusually cold and windy day in Louisiana's capital, but the fans are here to see their LSU Tigers take on the Florida Gators. Welcome to Alex Spock's Stadium. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. Brutal weather for May in Baton Rouge the last couple of days, but it hasn't cooled down. Number three LSU in the first two games of this series with Florida. They go for the sweep today. Game one Thursday. We're led offensively by Jacoby Jones. They were one of the most talented players in the entire field. Jacoby Jones went deep. LSU won the opener. Cody Glenn was outstanding for LSU. The sophomore, usually not their opening weekend starter, but played the part in game two. Well, the offense LSU showed up. This is a loaded team. Very balanced. But the one thing that's been consistent the entire year is Aaron Nola. Fourth straight complete game for Nola. He has a one ERA. In the last four games, LSU wins the second game 5-0. SEC standings in the West. LSU has a three-game lead on Arkansas, who has won six straight, but they haven't been able to make up much ground on the Tigers. And it's all Vanderbilt in the East, leading South Carolina by seven. Florida is eight and a half out. The Gators' biggest quest right now is just getting into the NCAA tournament. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Baton Rouge alongside my partner, Kyle Peterson, former three-time All-American at Stanford. I'm Clay Mathic. Beautiful day here today. The weather's been lousy the last couple of days, and LSU has won 42 of its first 48 games this year. They have the potential to be one of the best teams in program history, and they are very balanced. They're loaded. I mean, this is a club literally off to the best start in the history of LSU baseball, which is incredible when you look at the history of this program. Yeah. But I think the key this year for LSU and the key right now in the game of college baseball is balance, and LSU has it. Second in the SEC and average, second in the ERA, and they're filled 981 as a team. You're going to see an infield for LSU that is incredibly talented. Two shortstops literally in the left side of the diamond. He borrowed the third baseman, was a shortstop in junior college. They can pick it up, they can throw it, but they've definitely hit enough, and they're going to face a Florida team today that really is growing up between uh, in front of our eyes. Florida's a club that, you know, during the course of the year, started really slow. Indiana went down and took a series from them early. They graduated so much from last year. Just two runs this entire series. They have lost 67% of their offense from last year's club. There's Kevin O'Sullivan, the bench boss for the Gators in his sixth year. He says he's having a lot of fun coaching these guys, even though there have been some ups and downs. And here's his batting order. Richie Martin, who's found a new home in center field in the leadoff spot again. Casey Turgeon batting second. There is Gushu in the three hole. Justin Schaefer, who leads the SEC in doubles, is the cleanup hitter. Zach Powers, V Cash Ramjet, Josh Tobias, Harrison Bader, and Cody Dent. They're going to be facing Ryan Eads, a right hander for LSU. Coming off a tough luck, no decision against South Carolina last week. Pitched well, did not factor in the decision, but. For the most of the year, he's been very good. Seven and one coming into the day. He's been really good. The stuff for Eads is really good as well. Fastball can get into the low 90s at times. Really good slider. And Eads is a guy that really, coming into the year, they thought they had two aces in Nola and Eads. Nola's probably outpitched him at this point. Eads definitely has all of the talent. Slider at any point during the course of the ball game, And he really does have ace stuff. But he's a guy that just from a pure stuff standpoint could start the opener for almost any team in the entire country. LSU's blessed. Now they get him thrown a game three. We love coming to Baton Rouge and the weather finally cooperating this weekend about 70 degrees here as we get ready for the first pitch. It was windy and blustery cold here last night. There was rain on Thursday didn't rain out that game on Thursday night but it certainly made everything damp and uncomfortable. But a beautiful sunny day here on this Saturday for game three and we're underway the first pitch from Ryan Eads is a strike to Richie Martin. True freshman out of Brandon, Florida. Two for seven in the series was 0 for three last night against Aaron Nola. This one fouled off right side. Just about everybody went 0 for against Nola last night in that Gators lineup. They managed just four hits and were shut out for just the second time all year. It's the kind of stuff that Nola has. Four straight complete games with a one ERA over the course of the year. He still hasn't lost. It'll be Richie Martin, Casey Turgeon, and Taylor Gushu to hit here for Florida. 
And that just missed. I don't know how it missed, but Scott Klein does not ring up Martin. One and two. Good spot. Trying to go fastball outside like a Ty Ross. He's sitting up right on the left-handed batter's box. Now this one skips all the way back. Two and two. Ryan Eads hasn't won since April 6th against Kentucky. Now that doesn't mean that he's been pitching poorly. We talked about his outing last week against South Carolina. Seven innings, two unearned runs on just six hits. Checked his swing. And Ty Ross, a very capable catcher, pops up, throws him out. One up, one down for Florida here in the first. There's that slider. Said he could throw it in any count. Needs definitely can. 2-2 two -two pitch. All fastballs up to this point. Just straight top to bottom break. And he throws it so hard. You can see the reaction right there. Richie Martin out in front of it. Red fastball swung at fastball. Then the slider just dropped out of the zone and he couldn't hold up. That'll bring up Terzian. Left-handed hitter. 5'9", 170 pounds. Not a big guy, but... Swings a big bat on occasion. Five home runs, which is tied for the team lead. And he's second on the team in runs batted in. He takes ball one. Here you see the numbers on Turjan. The 25 runs batted in. That's good for second on the club. He has started every game since coming to Florida. All 65 last year. All 48 this year. And he's ahead in the count. Two balls and no strikes. Touched on it a bit, KP, at the top of the broadcast. The Gators have some work to do here. They've been to the College World Series the last three years as this one is fouled off. But right now, they've got some work to do just to secure a spot in the NCAA tournament. RPI is really good. But I think the problem for Florida is just the way they started the season. And... and one of the reasons the RPI is so good is the schedule that they've played so far. There are three games above 500 coming into today, and if you're going to make the tournament, you have to be above 500 or at 500 at the end of the year. So right now, that's the first goal, and Terjar is on there. The first hit of the game for the Gators. It's a young club. It's a club that really, as the season has gone on, you could see big strides, and I think if you're Kevin O'Sullivan, you like where they're heading at this point, but Terjar's a guy that's been a, a key part of it all year. So the RPI is 19, strength of schedule right at the top. Pretty good against the top 25, just 12 and 12. But the key is once SEC play started, they've actually played pretty good baseball. I mean, they were 12 and 9 coming into this weekend. And the schedule for Florida gets a little bit easier after they leave Baton Rouge. Yeah, they've got games Monday and Tuesday against Florida AM and then FAU respectively. And then they host Auburn and finish up at Georgia with three games. Here's Gushu now swinging at the first pitch and drives it to right center field. This is going to get off the wall. Foster can't control it. Coming around third is Terjan. He will score. Gushu heading to third, and he'll get in there with an RBI triple. And Florida jumps out in front one to nothing. This ball was juiced off the bat. I didn't think it was going to get that far. Jared Foster can go get it out in right field. Watch Gushu. Just a sophomore, but he's the age of a freshman. Graduated high school a year early so he could come into Florida. Last year played as a 17-year-old. This time takes it off the wall out in right center field. Jared Foster misplays it just a little bit. It's a one-out triple for Taylor Gushu. First RBI, first run of the game for Florida. 31st run batted in, just his second triple of the season. I've enjoyed watching him play the last couple of years. He's uh, He's got a bright future in this game. I know Kevin O'Sullivan loves him. And now here's Justin Schaefer as Ty Ross keeps that from going to the backstop. Schaefer, the only Gator regular hitting over 300. That, that seems odd to say. This late in the season because the Gators always seem to have a lot of very good hitters for average. And this one is stroke to center. Stevenson out there makes the catch. Tagging and coming home is Gushu. And Florida leads it 2 to nothing here in the first inning. Sack fly for Schaefer. Florida playing the game right in the first inning. 
He got gushy with the RBI triple. He's standing on third with one out. Justin Schaefer comes up. The infield's drawn all the way in. So all you're trying to do is just hit something hard somewhere. If you get it elevated in the outfield, that's going to score the run. Deep enough there out to center. Gushy scores easily. And the Gators, after getting shut out last night, scoring just two runs in the first two games, put two on the board here in the first. Here's the five-hole hitter powers. And one ball to the Gators DH. Powers, a member of the 2011 All-Freshman team in the SEC, missed last year after having some shoulder issues. Peels this one back foul, one and one. And his nine-game hitting streak snapped on Thursday night. Did manage one of the team's four hits against Nola last night in game two of the series. He's one for seven in the two games. Base is now empty as Florida has a 2-0 lead. Swing and a miss, one and two. There were people here last night with uh, parkas on. You never see that in Baton Rouge, certainly not in May. No, I, I don't. I don't know if I've ever been cold down here. Period. But <laughs> definitely not this late in the season. One, two, hit hard on the ground, but right at Jacoby Jones, the LSU second baseman. And Florida's done here in the top of the first, but they do some damage. They put up a crooked number. Two nothing after half. Here comes LSU to hit next. After a couple of poor games at the plate. They lead it two to nothing. Now LSU's going to hit for the first time under their head coach, Paul Maneri. Seventh season as LSU's head coach. He won his 300th game as the Tigers skipper last night. His lineup looks this way today. Designated hitter Sean McMullen has become a fixture in that leadoff spot, followed by Foster. Alex Bregman, the freshman sensation. There's Mason Katz, 13 home runs on the year. That's second best. In the SEC, Rhymes, Ibarra, Ross, Jones, and Andrew Stevenson rounding it out. We're going to face the left-hander, Danny Young. It was decided that Young would start about 9 o'clock this morning. It was a late decision by head coach Kevin O'Sullivan, and Young brings a 3-3 three and three record with a 3.44 ERA into the day. Just a freshman, too, stepping into a tough spot right now for Florida, trying to leave Baton Rouge and win a ball game. Upper 80s fastball, pretty good stuff for the left-hander, but the one thing to watch is he can throw a changeup at any count, and he'll use it a lot today against a pretty powerful LSU offense. So Sean McMullen leading it off for LSU. Back over the mound, backhanded by Turgeon, won't have a play. Infield single for McMullen, and the Tigers have the leadoff man on. Danny Young with that comebacker. I'm sure he had a flashback there momentarily. It was a week ago that he took a line drive to the mouth in the game against Tennessee. He needed 30 stitches to close a cut. Fortunately, no teeth were lost, no broken bones, and he's able to make the start today. And essentially misses no time. I mean, now back in there in a spot that they really need him. And we'll see if they control their pitch count today, too. Kevin O'Sullivan thought they might keep him down in the 50 60 pitch count range. Here's Jared Foster now. Started last night in right field, just his eighth start of the year. Gets the start again today. Sophomore out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. McMullen away from first. And a strike called on Foster. He's in an 0-2 hole. LSU has the best overall record among SEC teams at 42 and 6, but Vanderbilt has the best record in league play at 20 and 2 coming into the day. And South Carolina today. They took game one of that series, and so far so good for Vanderbilt in that game today against the Gamecocks already got to a nice lead 4-0. It's uh, it's amazing to start the Vanderbilt's out oh. so far in this conference. 20 and two. Tyler Beatty's already struck out four today for Vanderbilt. Beatty 11 and 0 on the year. Zoma had a really good night last night. They won the opener in South Carolina. The Vanderbilt's numbers this year. I mean, 20 and two. The league record for wins is 25. 
and there's still two, you know, two full weekends left. Oh, yeah. They can definitely get to it. Ball and two strikes to Foster. That misses in, so now it's even. That slider is new to Young's repertoire, but it seems to be coming along just fine. I think the interesting thing, too, is, I mean, Vandy this year, no LSU. And I do wish during the regular season we saw Vandy LSU. Hit hard to third. And a double play. Josh Tobias starts a 5-4-3 double play, and McMullen and Foster will sit down. Josh Tobias is a kid that, I mean, literally can hardly walk. He wears a walking boot during the course of the week. Got some foot issues. It's bothered him pretty significant the last two or three weeks, but this time a little two-hopper right at him. Throws a strike over to Casey Turgeon. Starts the 5-4-3. And now here's Alex Bregman. Bregman expected to be the SEC freshman of the year when it's all said and done. Maybe the player of the year in this league. We're going to flash the numbers for you. These are impressive, especially for a freshman. 396, five homers, and 43 driven in. 80 hits. That's the most of anybody in this conference. He hits with two outs. The 80 hits also second in the nation. And when you talk to Paul Maneri about this guy, he just beams. He knows he has something special in Bregman. Says he's the hardest working player he's ever had. Just a freshman, too. I mean, they tell stories about him coming over to the ballpark, calling a manager at 10, 30, 11 o'clock, turning the lights on just to come over and hit. The kid since the opener, since day one, has been the starting shortstop and hit third for LSU. Little tapper back to the mound. Young, who can field his position very well, throws him out. Good first inning for Danny Young. And after a full inning, Florida leads it to nothing. College baseball is brought to you by Chase Sapphire Preferred. There's more to enjoy. And Mazda, and the all-new Mazda 6. Let's look inside the LSU Hall of Fame. Boy, they've had a ton of All-Americans. 2-0 LSU trailing, though, as we go to the top of the second. Set up a four, as good as LSU has been. I mean, they've got six national championships. Over the program's history, it's been very impressive as this one skied foul ground left side off the bat of Ramjet. Shielding his eyes as Ibarra called off by Bregman who makes the catch for out number one. As good as LSU has been in the program's entire history, this could end up being maybe the most special team of them all. At least wins wise, maybe win another championship. Best start ever, which is incredible when you look at the clubs that they've had here at LSU. 42 and 6 for the Tigers at this point. Now here's Josh Tobias. And pitches down and outside. One ball and no strikes. Switch hitter in this Florida lineup. Batting from the right-handed side here against Eads. He talked about that painful foot situation for Tobias. It's a bunion on that right foot. He's likely going to have surgery after the season. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Just cut right into it and try and fix it. I mean, he's been in a walking boot for like three weeks. Shows up. Legged out a ball on Thursday night. Ended up scoring when he got up. You can see the look on his face like, I don't want to have to do that again. <laughs> There's a 3 0 strike. I mean, some people have bunions that are so bad they have to have a different shoe size on the one foot. And uh, yeah, I know it's a painful situation. Fortunately, like I don't know. Diatrist. Well, I know people in my family have had it. <laughs> Many talents. And there's a walk. 
for Tobias, no pun intended, as he kind of hobbles down to first. And he's aboard for Harrison Bader with one out. So Eads, who gave up a couple of runs in the first, has to deal with a base runner again here as Florida's Bader stands in. Started the year in center field, now in left field after Richie Martin returned to the lineup and moved to the outfield. Runner goes. Here's the throw from Ty Ross. He's got a good arm, but it's not in time as Tobias, who we've been making fun of his uh, mobility, gets down there with a stolen base. Take that. Gets on base. First pitch. Tobias not wasting any time. Off and running. I think you'll see this the entire day for Kevin O'Sullivan. They're going to push the envelope as much as possible just to try to get out of Baton Rouge with a win. Tobias on there with one out. Off and running right away. Now Florida with another runner in scoring position here in a second. Bader two for seven with a run batted in in the series RBI situation now. Breaking pitch one and one. 293 a home run 14 RBIs. Two great starts so far in this series for LSU but Eads having some difficulty here early against the Gators. Cody Glenn was solid on Thursday. And then Nola last night, the complete game four hit shutout. Swing and a miss. That one up. And Bader went after it. One and two. See if he goes right back to that same spot, too. Now, a one two count. So Eads can waste one here if he wants to. But you get a swing by Bader on the fastball up and out of the zone. See if they try to climb the ladder again with that exact same pitch. Went after it. It's a strikeout for Ryan Eads. And that's his second of the day. Back of the slider. Watch where this starts and ends up. We've seen this twice already today. Martin swung, tried to hold up his swing on the first strikeout of the game, and then this time Bader sees the exact same thing. Slider doesn't see it out of Eads' hands, can't hold the swing up, and he gets the freshman swinging. And now he has two outs to deal with the number nine hitter Cody Dent. And time called by Dent. Dent's going to graduate tomorrow from Florida. Good thing uh, this three game series started on Thursday so he will be able to walk in the ceremony tomorrow back on campus. That misses outside one ball and no strikes to Cody Dent. It's been a tough year at the plate for Dent. 179, no homers, and six runs batted in. And you're thinking, well, he probably hasn't been in the lineup that much. It's not the case. He's been pretty much a regular for the Gators. Dent's a guy, too, that can do just about everything. You can play him at third. You can play him at, at short, which they are tonight. He's filled a bunch of different roles for the Florida team over the years. Somehow that missed. Two balls and no strikes. And Dent this year 0 for 12 with runners in scoring position in SEC play this year, trying to change that. Gators already up 2 0. Tobias out at second for Florida. And the 2 0 pitch from Eads. That's fouled straight back. Dent's dad, Bucky, will. Uh, be at the graduation ceremony tomorrow, I'm sure. His twin sister, Caitlin, is an outfielder on the North Carolina State softball team. Not sure if she'll be able to make it. Two outs, the 2-1 to Cody Dent. Runner goes. Throw down to third. Not in time. And Tobias with another stolen base here in the half. That one's on Eads. It was a, a walking lead by Tobias and he didn't stop him and he just kept going. That spot he's on his own. Look at him go. I mean, he's off and running read it perfectly. That's one you don't even need to throw when the jumps that good. So Tobias 
On a bad wheel, still second and third. <laughs> he, he's doing that just to shut us up. Might steal home here just to shove it in their face. <laughs> Count even. Checked his swing, got him. Dan strikes out. And Eads will walk to the dugout with his third strikeout of the day. A lot of trophies on the wall and a lot of plaques in the room. 2 nothing. Floor. Don't miss a great SEC softball matchup on Saturday on ESPN as Lauren Gibson and the Bulls take on the Tigers. Number two, Tennessee, number 11, Missouri, 7.30 tonight on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. He's Kyle Peterson. I'm Clay Maffick. We're in Baton Rouge on this Saturday afternoon, and it's 2-0 Florida, leading the number three team in the country as the Tigers hit here. Bottom of the second. That's Mason Katz. He'll be followed by Rafe Rhymes and Christian Ibarra. Four, five, and six. The meat of this Tigers order. Katz two for eight in the series with a run batted in. Line drive back up the middle off Danny Young. Second hit for LSU against Young. The second time they've had the leadoff man. Aggressive approach, too, so far for LSU. Mason Katz on there to start the second with a leadoff single. The senior who decided to come back for his senior year. Second team all SEC the last two years, an all star up in the Cape. That's a pretty decent way to spend the summer. Runner up in the College Home Run Derby at TD Ameritrade. College Home Run Derby will be again this year, July 3rd at TD Ameritrade. Yeah. I think that was a nice addition to the festivities yeah. in Omaha. All right, but when you flash up all those great numbers and accomplishments for Katz, it begs the question, why wasn't he drafted last year? I think part of it is his size and where does he play when he gets to the next level. He'll get a chance this year. Somebody will take him as a senior and, and put him in the system and see if he can shoot through it. Here's Ray Frimes rolling one through on the left side. Back-to-back -back hits to start the second inning for LSU. You know, I think a lot of times, too, when we watch college games, and you hear this in different sports, um, you talk about guys that are just college players, very good college players, and that's exactly what Rhymes and Katz have been. I mean, you, every program in the country would take these two kids, and, you know, outside of Bregman, they were probably the two most important recruits last year for Paul Maneri. He gets two seniors back that had fourth and fifth in his lineup in, in major college baseball. It's not a lot of times you get a senior, let alone multiple seniors, that you can plug into key parts of your lineup, and Paul has two of them. Nobody out, two on for Ibarra. And we'll get a time. Tigers hitting over 300. RBI situation here. Ibarra hitting 350 with four homers and 25. Check that. 30 runs batted in. I want to shortchange this guy. He certainly doesn't deserve any disrespect. Ninth in the SEC with an on base percentage of 447. And a strike called one and one. He had a stretch of 42 straight games reaching base safely. Come to an end last Sunday in a game you and I saw here against South Carolina. Transfer from Rio Hondo College. I've been waiting to say that one. <laughs> Here's the 1-1. One -one. Oh, that hit him. Base is loaded for LSU. Well, Danny Young, who breezed through the first inning, has him loaded here in the second. Trying to go fastball in and held on to it just a little bit too long. So the freshman Danny Young faces three in the first inning. Now he's faced three in the second. The only problem is they're all on base. Base is loaded. Nobody out for LSU as Kevin O'Sullivan makes the slow walk out to the mound and for the entire year. And Jonathan Crawford, the only one that's healthy and able to go on that weekend rotation. So here's Ty Ross with the bases loaded for the Tigers. Swung on. This is a gift. Right back to the mound. There's an out at home plate. Young flips it to Gushu. And Katz is forced out at home. We just missed with the fastball in. The last pitch he hit, he borrowed right in the leg. This time tries to go back to the exact same spot. Gushu setting up in. Time looked like a little cutter. Just got around it a little bit, tried to run him in on the hands of Ty Ross, and it did exactly what that pitch.
supposed to do. Move just enough to get in on the hands of the right handed hitter and tied him up. It's an easy out right there for Danny Young. And now Jacoby Jones. Strike one. Jones three for eight with a home run and two runs batted in in the series. His hitting has picked up as late as of late. Hit a solo home run to left on Thursday night. Here's a look at that shot on Thursday and it almost left the stadium. How about this? Well, about 12 rows deep out in left center field. Left field landings exactly where it did land. <laughs> Good crowd out there again uh, today. Oh, yeah. Last night not so much. It was too cold. <laughs> See your breath last night. They stayed out by all the time. <laughs> They stayed out by the campers last night in the parking lot. We're good. Where they could huddle we'll, around. Uh, we'll stay right here, thanks. Around the refreshments. Jones hits with one out, the 2 1. Wanted to hold up and couldn't do it. 2 and 2. Second time we've seen that little cutter from Danny Young. And he'll throw it to the right handed hitter. So they react fastball, watch the hands. Sees fastball, reacts, and can't hold up because the action of that ball is coming in on the hands of Jacoby Jones. That's a changeup. Cutter in on his hands, now run the changeup out of the way. If he makes contact, probably going to roll over. Infield a double play depth. Young trying to work out of a bases loaded jam. Hit hard down the line, fair. Rhymes will score. Ibarra being waved home. Here comes the throw, cut off, and it's. A tie ball game as LSU plates two with a single for Jacoby Jones. He's starting to heat up. Jones was that guy in this LSU lineup that everybody just kept waiting on because the talent has been there. The problem is the numbers haven't been there the entire year. But for Jones already having a big weekend, we showed you the home run that he hit in game one earlier. Now this time ties it with a double down the line, trying to throw that same pitch. A little cutter in on his hands, but Jones had just seen it. Saw it out of the hand of the freshman just before this. Recognizes it this time. It just keeps it in the line. Nothing Tobias can do. LSU with two of their own here. The second has tied it. And now Andrew Stevenson, the number nine hitter for LSU. Stevenson making his first start since last Sunday. In game three of the series against South Carolina. They have even this game up. There's a strike. One and one. LSU coming off its first SEC series loss of the year last week to South Carolina. Before that, they had won six straight league weekends. And they had ascended to number two in the national polls, but that spot now belongs to Vanderbilt. And Gus Shue is going to trot out to the mound to join the conversation. Well, Young got the ground ball he was looking for. It's just it hugged the line enough to get into left field and score two. Made a decent pitch. The problem is he doubled up and Jones recognized it the second time. First time he threw that cutter in on his hands. Jones tried to hold the swing up and they ended up calling a strike. But then the second time when he recognized that spin right away, he hit it just inside the line. Ball and a strike to Stevenson. Young comes home, hit on the ground to second. Charging is Turgeon, has one play, that's to first. Another run scores as Ross comes home. And LSU leads for the first time today. Andrew Stevenson, who doesn't get a lot of starts out there in center field today, just plays the game the way you're supposed to. See the infield back, try to hit something on the ground in the infield. That's going to score a run and give LSU the lead. Now back to the top of the order in McMullen. Infield single his only time up. Handhold continues to work in the Florida bullpen. Swung on lifted left side. Bader camps under it. 
And that does it for LSU here in the second, but they scored three times against Danny Young and take the lead three to two. More Major League Baseball action on ESPN Sunday at eight. A West Coast battle as Matt Kemp leads the Dodgers against Buster Posey and the Giants. Then Monday at seven, Justin Upton and the Braves look to continue their hot start. They're gonna face Joey Votto and the Reds. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. And the Braves have a nice SEC flavor. How about that? Tim Hudson won his 200th last week. Paul Mahalam, former Mississippi State pitcher, and Mike Miner, who we saw just a few years ago at Vanderbilt. Pretty solid numbers for the SEC boys this year. Vanderbilt looking to win another series here today. Got South Carolina last night, final 3 2, even though. The Gamecocks rallied late. And speaking of 3 2 scores, that's where we're at now as Ryan Eads pitches with the lead for the first time here today. As we go to the top of the third inning, Florida will send Martin, Turjan, and Gushu 1 2 and 3. Eads 31 pitches so far. Gators struck quickly today, got two in the first. A couple of strikeouts for Eads in the second inning. Turned the Gators away quietly. Swung on and fouled back after uh, breaking his finger against Miami. This one hit to short. Should be an easy play for Bregman. It is. One up, one down. He's pretty good out there in center field, too. Cody Dennis filled in nicely at short, but I think down the road, Richie Martin's a shortstop. And now here's Turgeon. As a single. Two and two. Take the four. How's that? Stepped on a nail. It's your favorite. <laughs> it's on the family's bucket list. She really wants to get me there one day. And here is a one out walk for Casey Turgeon. She was just really getting better as the season goes on this year. And Eads will go back over to first. Turgeon back. Him behind the plate. He's pretty good defensively. And hit him third. This one spins back foul. Off more for Florida. When by all rights, he should be a college freshman. Swung out a miss, one and two. Not even going to say anything. Up and in. Two. He's thinking. Two balls, two strikes, one out to Gushu. Runner goes. Here comes Ross's throw. It's going to skip away from the shortstop. Bregman is for Justin Schaefer. Sack fly for Schaefer. Here comes the 2 0 pitch. Just missed. Those two. 3 0 to Schaefer. And he walked him. 2 0. Misses him. Hit well to center. Backing off is Stevenson. And he'll track it down. So allowed out to end the top of the third. We've played two and a half, and it's 3 2 LSU. Well, next Saturday, ESPN is a great college baseball matchup between SEC foes when these LSU Tigers, led by Mason Katz, take on the Aggies of Texas AM. It's going to come your way at 1 Eastern next Saturday on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. How about the uh, new agreement between the SEC and ESPN? It was announced this past week, a 20-year arrangement. It will launch in August of 2014. The new SEC network, it will air SEC content 
24-7, 365, more than 1,000 events in year number one. 75 baseball games. 75 SEC baseball games on the network. Now Eric can hold on, so the Gators will go to the bullpen right away. Freshman gives up three in the second. Now Han hold on, who has the ability to go deep. He does have five starts on the season, so they've stretched Han hold out at times. Not great numbers, though, a six ERA. See if Handhold could give him three or four and try to get that Gators offense going too. Two, three, and four in the order for LSU, and Laird is going to pinch hit for the Tigers here in the number two spot. Jared Foster was in the two as a wide receiver. Good athlete. Plays a the run and he draws a four pitch walk baseball career missed his entire senior season so the team this year will play team Cuba Cuba will come to the States to play I think a five or a six game set against team USA swung on and popped up that is the pitch that O'Sullivan was hoping for after the discussion on the mound Schaefer Handhold 34 games, just two in the last 14. His home runs have really tailed off, too. In fact, he hasn't homered in over a month. And down. Just a crazy march, especially when you consider the weather that everybody was having across the country. The 1 1 to Katz. Line drive, base hit. Laird will hold it second. LSU one out here in the third. They're looking for more. Ooh. And it looked like. And Handhold will do it again. Why not? Yeah, they're high on it. Is it available for the draft? They're really. Outside. They are going to appeal to the first base umpire tie too, what you were talking about earlier. Ground ball to third. Tobias a chance again for a double play, and he does it again. Tobias has turned two of those for Florida today. Now the Tigers still lead at 3 2. We'll talk with Paul Maneri when we come back. Hugh leads at 3 2 as we go to the top of the fourth. The Tigers had a chance for a big inning last half, but come up empty. Here's a look at the Western Division standings. LSU with a three game lead. Over the Razorbacks coming into the day. Arkansas has been hot as of late, but really haven't been able to make up much ground on Paul Maneri's Tigers, and he joins us now from the dugout. Hey, Paul, I know we see Eats today, but Aaron Nola has been so good for you this year. Goes complete game again last night. What's been the key? Why has he been so good this year? Kyle, he does everything. I mean, he just commands three pitches for strikes. He's a great competitor. Uh, he's got velocity, he's got a tight breaking ball, his changeup's outstanding, he's a good athlete, and he has that it factor where he just raises his game to another level when he needs to. You know, we've shown how complete your club is, but if there's one area that you think you need to work on as a team, do you know what it'd be? Hitting in the clutch. <laughs> we we got to come through with some bigger hits. You know, we did, got one today, or, but we're just going to need to come, take advantage of the opportunities when we get them. All right, Paul, thank you. Thanks, Paul. Okay. There goes Paul Maneri. Again, won his 300th game as LSU's head coach last night. He's had two College World Series teams, including a national title team in 2009 during his time at LSU. And it would appear that he has the makings of another Omaha team here this season. Oh, yeah. Ramjit, Tobias, and Bader, 6, 7, and 8, scheduled to hit for Florida. Hit hard to third. Ibarra snags it. And throws. Ace for LSU. One out is Tobias hits. Now the wind was brutal. Just a sophomore, too. He'll be a really high pick next year in the draft. Sophomore out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Let's that one go. Now. Oh. <laughs> Area that Scott Klein has given most today. Yeah, that's what you hate. As Harrison Bader, also a strikeout victim today, bats of that, trying to be 
shown up by a player? Not the best ones. I mean, you see it sometimes with guys. I mean, they're human just like everybody else. Eads right now is putting on a pretty good show. Struggled in the first, but three scoreless since then. LSU leads it 3 2 as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Number three, LSU leading Florida 3 2 as we go to the bottom of the fourth. USA Today coaches bowl coming into the weekend. North Carolina has been in that number one spot most of the year. There's Vanderbilt as they leapfrogged LSU this past poll. And a lot of these teams could be in Omaha, and they all have a chance to win it this year. Absolutely. I mean, I think the top seven in the poll right now are all national seeds. We got Oregon, Oregon State that are there. Fullerton will be a national seed. Vanderbilt added again today. Tyler Beatty with a no hitter in the seventh. Christian Ibarra strokes one back up the middle off Eric Handhold. Today, probably NC State for that eighth and final national steve but still th about three weeks to go ty ross the medium deep right it's arizona state did i see that right appell with 13 strike go first overall this year in the draft it looks like nothing in one to jones a ball and a strike with you at alec box stadium in baton rouge beautiful saturday afternoon feels like every day <laughs> popped up Maybe a chance for Gus, who has the mask off, giving chase, but it bangs off. Just to get there, but the talent is there to make a run. Because of injuries and because of guys being poached by the draft, it's been a bit of a difficult year, and there is a strike first for LSU. They lead it 3-2 here in the fourth. Swung on, fly ball left field. Bader moving toward the gap to make the catch. And a leadoff hit for LSU, but then Hanhold gets the next three. We're going to talk to Kevin O'Sullivan, Florida head coach, when we come back. For Florida, as we go to the top of the fifth, Kevin O'Sullivan, head coach of the Gators, joins us now from the dugout. Kevin, aggressive on the base pass so far today. Is that the game plan against the Eads? Yeah, you know, we, you know I, we don't expect to, you know, get 15 hits today, but we, I think we're having some good at-bats. We're going to be aggressive on the base pads and um, use our legs a little bit. I know you get the freshman out of there early, now handhold in there right now, and he's a kid that you're excited about in the future. What can we expect to see out of him? Well, he's got a really good arm. You know, I, I, we're really, really pleased with all of our freshman arms, but Eric in particular, you know, he's fastball 994, a really good break ball to feel for a changeup. He's got a chance to be as good as he wants to be. All right, Kevin, Kevin. Thanks. Thank thanks, you. guys. Yep. Well, despite the attrition and uh, the injuries and the draft taking some guys that maybe had planned on having uh, and playing a very tough schedule, you look at what Florida has been able to accomplish this year, and you might say they've overachieved, and they're in position to make another NCAA tournament. Well, and hey, after the start they had, they could have gone away. Yes. I mean, that, that's a team that, that really could have been buried after the start that they had, but they really started playing better once they got into SEC play. Yeah. They've started to put things together, a game above 500 in the SEC coming into today. And the RPI is not going to be a problem. They just got to make sure they stay above 500. Here's Cody Dent to hit against Eads. He went down looking his first time up. Florida started 11 and 16 this year. And even suffered a series sweep at the hands of Florida Gulf Coast back in February. Started to get things straightened out late March. As it's going two now to Dent, the number nine hitter. And when you talk to Kevin O'Sullivan, he'll tell you, you know, Despite some of the ups and downs and difficulties this year, he's having as much fun as he's had coaching during his time at Florida. You know, and I think for a guy like Sully, who, who is active, um, you had a team that was so talented the last few years that, that part of it, and it's a sign of a good coach, you just kind of get out of the way. I mean, let them do what they do because they're just that good. They played 11 freshmen this year. Look at Tennessee. 17 freshmen Dave Serrano has played this year. You got a young team like three. that. Excuse me. You got a young team like that. You're going to do more. We see him hit and run more. We see him bunt more. More active on the base pass. Three stolen bases already today. And, and that's the one thing. I, I, when you've got a team that's loaded, sometimes I think it's hard just to stay out of the way. But a spot like this, he's really been able to coach this year. Now Dan goes down looking for the second time today. He's out number one here in the fifth. And back to the top of the order in Richie Martin. You know, the one thing, too, that I appreciate about O'Sullivan, he's always got a smile on his face. 
He is a, a lot of fun to talk to as Martin shows bunt pulls the bat back. One strike. Pretty intense guy, though. He I is. Mean, he is. The, the smile is there, but just an intense guy. I mean, when he shows up, he's he's ready to go and a tireless recruiter. That one skips in the dirt. Martin, a strikeout and a ground out. He's 0 for 2. The Gators had won three SEC series in a row before this weekend. Now in jeopardy of losing their fourth straight SEC game. Martin again flashes bunt. <laughs> the crowd has been very vocal today in the ears of Scott Klein. Two and one. Kind of going early today. Still got that tailgate in it. Just because it's a noon start doesn't mean they didn't get going early. <laughs> You're wading through people at 6 a.m. outside the gates here. They're here early always. Down the line and foul. I think Chris is out there in left field. Oh, yeah. He already texted me. He's bouncing around somewhere. He wanted me to see his shirt. What's on his shirt? I don't know. Catch I haven't upstairs. seen it yet. He wanted me to see it. He had my son out there with him last week. It was outstanding. Two balls, two strikes to Martin. In on the hands. Roller out to second. Jones charging and will flip to Katz for the out. See, Katz at first broke over to potentially make that play and then had to spin around, kind of reverse course to get back to first base. Watch his first move. The first baseman breaks to make the play, and now he's got to get back in time. So you find the base, now find the baseball. Jacoby Jones gets there. Good idea, too. Sometimes guys get a little bit too excited with that throw, trying to put too much on it. There's just no time to react at first base. Jones flipped it just like he was turning a double play. So now Turgeon to hit. He's been on twice with a single and a walk. Also came around to score in the first inning. Said it before, the Gators have hosted a regional four straight years. They've never done that before in their program history. 1-0 pitch. Now 2-0, and, oh, and Ty Ross is going to come out. Now the question is if Florida can finish real strong if they can win here today in the series finale take one of two from the number three team in the country take care of business in those two non conference games against Florida and M and FAU and do well against Auburn and at Georgia is there any chance that they could even host a regional I, I, I actually think there is and I think I mean, if they win today they're 13 and 11 in the conference with two weeks to go. So if they went two out of three, two out of three, they finished the season 17 of 13 in the SEC with an RPI that at that point is, if it's not in the top 15, it's going to be really close. They're definitely in the discussion. Um, the committee has shown in the past that it's more important what you do at the end of the season as opposed to what you do at the beginning of the season. And this is a club that's playing better now. But can't get swept. You get swept, and that, that spins them back pretty good. Then you you got to probably win five out of six over the next two weekends in conference. And if they get swept here today, it would be the second time this season they've been swept. The first time was to Florida Gulf Coast back in February. 2-2, two -two, the count, two outs. Ground ball again on the right side, charging his cats. He'll take it himself. And it's a one, two, three inning for the second time in a row. He has retired the last seven Florida hitters. NBA playoffs continue Sunday on ESPN with a couple of game sevens if necessary. At one, it's Grizzlies Thunder. And then at 3.30, the Pacers take on the Knicks. Now the Knicks uh, finished off the Celtics Last night, all winners of game six last night. Kevin Durant with a great series against Houston. 32 and a half points, shooting 50% from the field. Guy's a blast to watch. No Westbrook, he's having to take it over himself. I could use some of that right now. Some of what? Yes. <laughs> Just anything. Yeah, the answer is yes. Well, this is Cajun country. They do a 
They do some Cajun stuff at the concession stands oh, yeah. here. They, they, they certainly do in the parking lot. I have to go to the walk-ons tonight for dinner. Line drive right field, base hit. Lead off, shot down the line for Sean McMullen. He's digging for second base. And gave a brief thought about heading for third, but he'll hold a two with a leadoff double. Fifth inning in a row, the leadoff man on for the Tigers. You know, we talk about, and rightfully so, Bregman Katz rhymes right in the middle of this lineup. Ibarra doesn't get the love that he should. He's a really good hitter. I really like McMullen. Junior college kid that's come in this year. They've hit him at the top of the lineup. And he's not that leadoff guy that just kind of slaps it around the yard. I mean, if, if you miss inside, which he did right there, he can spin on it. Now a leadoff double for McMullen here in the fifth. You know, all five innings with the leadoff man off, but they've only scored in one inning. That was the second. Now Laird to hit for the second time today. Jared Foster started the game in the two hole. Handhold will bluff the runner back. Danny Young started the game for Florida. And now Handhold is going to call for Gushu to come out and have a little talk. The 0 1 pitch swung on a miss, 0 and 2. This is the third inning of work for Handheld. Or Handhold, as it is. That's the second time I've done that. My apologies we to his to hold family. your hand at this point. <laughs> Outside, 1 and 2. Bregman on deck for the Tigers. Laird, the number two hitter. Time call. Look at LSU schedule going forward there at Texas A&M next weekend. In a non-conference game against New Orleans. And then finish here with Ole Miss for three. Swung on a missed and got him. Handhold a strikeout. And that is his second. Not a great at bat right there. Laird comes up in a bunt situation, fouls the first one off, and then swings through two in a row. Top to bottom slider right there by Handhold. We've seen that same pitch from Eads. Handhold with the ability to do a two, just threw right over the top of it, right under the bat of Laird. Here's Bregman. Has been quiet. Today, but in the series, has three hits. Three for nine. Ground out in a fly out this afternoon. This guy had a 23 game hitting streak at one point this season from March 6th to April 12th. 23 straight games with a bingo. Skips away from Gushu. And over to the third now goes McMullen. Not a great pitch, but probably one that Gushu needs to keep in front of him. Ball down in the dirt and that breaking ball. Some of the sometimes the, the hardest thing about blocking a breaking ball is when it comes into the dirt because of the spin, it's not going to bounce straight up. And that time you could see it kind of shot off to the side of Gushu. Try to get his body in front of it, but it's careened off the side. Now McMullen just 90 feet away. Infield in. Looking to choke off that runner. The 1 1 to Bregman. Lays off 2 and 1. Four twenty four with runners in scoring position. He just looks like a player. Going no batting gloves, a little eye blacks. Got the old school like Nike high tops on. 
who stands in and hits. I don't think Paul Maneri's ever been more confident with one of his players that he can project is going to play in the big leagues. And this early. I mean, you just. It is such a huge advantage. And you think about this. I mean, LSU for seven years will essentially have two shortstops. They had Austin Nola Aaron's brother for four years, and now you get Bregman for three. 2-2 two, two is stroke to left. That's going to get over the head of Bader and off the wall. Loping home is McMullen, and jogging into second is Bregman with an RBI double. It's 4-2 Tigers. He can play the game, recognize slider early, and just smoked it out to left center field. Bader was playing pretty shallow out in the left, but I don't know if it matters where you're playing on this one. Caught too much of the zone, was trying to go away, and watch the glove of Gushu move all the way in. Came right back into the barrel of the freshman Bregman. A little short hop out to the left center field fence. RBI double and LSU adds another one here in the fifth. That might do it for Handel. LSU and Ryan Harris comes on in relief. Impact freshman in the country. Bregman certainly among them. Joe McCarthy at Virginia and Thomas Eshelman at Cal Fullerton also having great rookie years. He walked his second guy of the year last night. Eshelman, the freshman. Wow. Eight and two, the Friday starter for Fullerton. Garza, another freshman, will go today for Fullerton, who should be a national seed. And Sky Bolt broke his foot and is out for a while. But if he were healthy, he'd be giving Bregman a run for National Freshman of the Year. Now Ryan Harris on for the Gators. Runner goes, and the pitch is away from Gushu. He can't eat more. Ryan Harris on for Florida. He's the third pitcher of the day for the Gators. Katz rips it foul. Whatsoever. The 1 1 pitch outside. Harris comes home. Down and in. So that's. Well, if he hit 10 more, he would lead the nation by one. Bryant has 22, I believe. Here's Ray Frimes. Checks his swing. Being four here, a ground ball that can get him out of the inning. Harris comes home. Big swing. Here's a fake from Gushu. He does not throw. Be careful first pitch here. And Keith's coming up first pitch hacking. Good numbers for Ibarra on the season, especially power wise and RBI wise. And now here comes Kevin O'Sullivan again. And another pitching change. That will be all for Harris. And his rear appearances as he makes number 62 here on Saturday. Power left hander. That's the one thing you go from power right hander now to power left hander and Gibson Kevin O'Sullivan just trying to give LSU a little different look see if he borrows swinging early right here if he gets a first pitch fastball I think he's hacking. He borrowed three for five with the bases loaded which they are now. Takes down and in. He borrowed hit by a pitch and a single today. Scored a run in the second inning. 4-2 LSU going for the series sweep here today against Florida. In again, 2-0. Bregman at third, Katz at second, and Rafe Rhymes over at first for LSU. They're loaded. One across this inning already for LSU. The 2-0 from Gibson. Swung on, hit down the line, and fair. Bregman scores. Katz right behind him. Rhymes is going to try to score, and he will. A three-run double for Christian Ibarra. And LSU has blown this one open. I think Ibarra is one of the most unsung guys in this entire lineup. Hitting right at 350. The Highest on base percentage in the entire club on base percentage at 447 coming into this one fastball in his hands and a fastball count. Tied him up a little bit but just put it in the right spot blooped it down the left field line. Katz was right on Bregman's tail to score and then right front Rafe Rimes came all the way back one two and Rimes would follow three RBIs for Ibarra and LSU with a little distance right here.
And Gushu trying to calm down Gibson. As Ty Ross hits. After that bases clearing double by Ibarra. Ross 0 for 2 today has a fielder's choice to his credit. He was able to score after getting on on that fielder's choice. Back in the second inning. To right field. No. Ramjet reaches up and keeps it from getting into the outfield. Good play by Vikash Ramjet who has turned into a pretty good defensive first baseman. It's a good career. If it's found himself in the lineup a little bit more than maybe some thought he would last year. This year a mainstay right in the middle of their lineup but it's been a key part of a couple Florida runs to Omaha. That was the second out. Jones to hit now for LSU. Swing and a miss. He went down looking his last time up but doubled. Back in the second he's one for two. And he's four hits in the series including a big home run on Thursday. Sprayed foul two strikes. Danny Young started for Florida. Eric Hanhold came on in the third inning for the Gators. And we've seen Ryan Harris and now Daniel Gibson the fourth pitcher today for the Gators. Kobe Jones grew up in Mississippi but always dreamed of playing at LSU. Watched many runs to Omaha. Dreamed of being a Tiger and he is. Chase that one up. So a strikeout for Gibson but four runs across for LSU here in the fifth. The three run double by Christian Ibarra has opened this game up. It's now seven two Tigers after five. LSU scoring four in the fifth and they now have a comfortable seven to two lead for their starter Ryan Eads before the game Carl Lewis now serves as a goodwill ambassador of the United Nations and also has a special cause ogre organ donor awareness that keeps him running and he ran the first pitch to home plate before the game that's a smart guy mm -hmm. knows how to uh Knows how to pick him up and put him down still and, and forget throwing it. Let's just not take any chances. Just run it all the way in and drop it off. First American to qualify for five Olympic teams in track and field. Still in great shape. Taylor Gushu leads it off for Florida. They've got two on the board and they scored early in this game against Ryan Eads. Two right away in the top of the first, but nothing since then and collectively just two hits today they haven't had a hit since the first inning and two of the first three guys Turgeon singled and Gushu followed with a triple and since then Florida has not had a hit Gushu had an RBI triple his first time up and scored the Gators second run he put that ball off the right center field wall and then struck out looking against Eads in the third. Oh, that just missed off the plate. I like how Ross received that. And we talk about guys who can really catch and throw. There's a time that you go out and get it, but watch how late he catches this ball. Brings his glove all the way back in, and you're trying to let the ball travel as far as it can to potentially get as low as it can for the umpire to see it. If he goes out and gets it, he catches it a lot higher. That time lets it come all the way into his body. And tap foul again. It's that little stuff that ends up making a big difference and also makes you feel a lot better on the mound. Well, you've got a guy that can do that, that can really receive. I think sometimes that's a part of the game that's overlooked by the plate. We talk about how guys throw sometimes, but the guys that can really receive and know when to go get it, know when to stick it, and when to potentially bring it back in the zone just a little bit. They end up getting you strikes over the course of the year. And Ross. Keeps that. 
getting all the way to the backstop two and two. You know and the pitchers for LSU have. A great luxury just the defense behind them is so good it's a 981 fielding percentage coming into the day just let them hit it. Two balls two strikes to gush you the number three hitter for Florida. This is going to roll through for a base hit the first since the first inning against Eads leadoff man is on for the Gators. He's had 80 pitches now. See, he's really settled in. Two six strikeouts on the day, had one in the first, but since then, well, that guess you hit was the first since the third batter of the game. So the Gators trying to get something going down five, top of the sixth inning. This is Justin Schaefer. Two way player for the Gators, has eight mound appearances this year. He skies this one right side short right field Jacoby Jones having trouble with the sun. I think he lost it. They're able to force out Gushu who was in a difficult situation there between the bases on a ball that wasn't hit very deep. And so LSU is able to get it out. Good work too by Mark Laird who did not start this game in the outfit. They brought him in to pinch hit now playing right and you could see right about now you know that Jones doesn't have it. He can't see it, but his right fielder Laird is there. It's a bare hand on his ball, almost throwing it like a third baseman. Throw it off that left foot. Plenty of time to get Gushu at second. Yeah, there's nothing Gushu can do right there, too. I mean, you got to freeze and make sure you don't get doubled off. And you know, a lot of times you don't know that a guy's lost it in the sun until it hits the ground. So one out and one on for Powers. Gators DH today. Hitless in two plate appearances. Ground out to second, and he lined out to center. The ball hit pretty well in the third inning. Now 2 0 to Powers. Powers has three home runs on the year. Two of them have been grand slams, and the grand slams happened in the same game against Duke back in February. He is only the second Gator in program history to do that. Two grand slams in one game. And this one hit well, but well foul, too. Can you name the other one? The other Gator to hit two grand slams in one game? Brad Wilkerson. Good guess, but uh, no, it's Preston Tucker. He did it in 2009. That was my second guess. He didn't give me enough time. You're a Stanford grad. You don't need a lot of time. You're a genius. I took plenty of time getting the degree. <laughs> Rolled the second. This could be two. Tagging the runner is Jones. And the throw to first. That was a nifty play by Jacoby Jones. And not an easy one either. With his momentum coming in, it's not an easy throw to make second base. Jones is a heck of an athlete. And on this one, a lot easier just to try to make the tag. And the throw himself reaches out. Tag Schaefer on the way by. Still has plenty of time to make the throw and finish off his own double play. Ryan Eads is crude. Football matchup on ESPN is Lauren Gibson and the Bulls take on the Tigers tonight. 7.30 Eastern time. First pitch, number two Tennessee, number 11 Mizzou on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. Arkansas another win today. Colby Suggs the save. They win game one of a doubleheader. Beat Kentucky 5-3. So Arkansas has already won a series this weekend. See if they can sweep Kentucky. Andrew Stevenson trying to bunt his way on for LSU. Tobias can't throw him out. Tell you what, LSU has done a bang up job getting the leadoff man on. They've done it every single inning. It usually works out pretty well if you can do that. The South Carolina game, game two of the South Carolina series, they get the leadoff man on eight of nine innings. Eads didn't allow an earned run. They got 14 hits and lost. It was one of those to where you look at the box score and it just yeah. didn't make any sense. And now McMullen and the top of the LSU order. LSU has had five leadoff hits and one walk today. And and last week, 
LSU drops two of three in that series against the Gamecocks. It was one of those where everything that could go wrong in that first loss did for LSU, even though they played well. And then they hit a lot of Adam balls in the series finale and lost. Base hit right side. Stevenson going to third. Here comes the throw. It's cut off. It shouldn't have been because they had a play on it. Runners at the corners. Nobody out for LSU in the six. Yeah, surprised Dent cut that ball. Thought he'd let it go all the way through. Looked like they were going to have a chance to throw Stevenson out at third base. But again, Sean McMullen, the leadoff hitter. Third hit of the day for McMullen. LSU back in business. I should throw him, and it looked like it was online. If they let it through, it looked like Stevenson probably would have beat it, but surprised it didn't take a chance. So Daniel Gibson in a jam here with nobody out. Runner at first, a runner at third, and Jared Foster, excuse me, Mark Laird, who pinch hit for Foster earlier in the game, hits for the third time. He has walked and struck out today. Strike one. Daniel Gibson came on last inning. Fourth pitcher of the day for Florida. One of three Florida pitchers with 20 or more appearances this season. He's worked a lot out of that Florida pen. And he's working against Laird here in the sixth. And a tough day for the Florida pitching staff. Didn't get much out of the starter, Danny Young. Ooh, that almost hit him. Now two and two. Checked his swing. They're going to appeal to the third base umpire Jay Asher who was behind home plate last night. He says no. Now the count three balls and two strikes to Laird. Three two nobody out. Bottom of the six seven two LSU and the bases loaded again for the Tigers. And here comes Alex Bregman. Who has been the SEC's deadliest hitter this year. So if you're out there my friend now you are a right hander. Gibson a lefty but how do you deal to Bregman in this situation. The one thing that we've seen from Bregman and watching him now four or five times is he is aggressive and he's not afraid to go after the first pitch. And I think you better be careful with the first one. Maybe go off speed away from him, see if you can get him out in front. Bregman 0 for 2 with the bases loaded in SEC play this year. He had an RBI double his last time up. Here's the 1 0. Swung on and torched to right center. Laying out as Schaefer can't come up with the catch. This could clear the bases. One run is in. Two runs will score for LSU. A two run double for Alex Bregman, who's having a day. It is 9 to 2 Tigers. Double to left. Double to right. Kid just hits it where it's pitched. This time a fastball out of way. Watch location. Watch the swing. 
Fastball elevated out of way, doesn't try to pull it, just goes with it. Backspin out to right center. Justin Schaefer just about caught this ball, too. Laid out right in front of the warning track or right on the warning track when he lands. Just out of his reach, two more RBIs for Bregman, two more runs for LSU. And with nobody out, the Tigers have an opportunity to get a bunch more, especially with a guy like Mason Katz up there. He'll swing at this pitch, ground it to short. A run will score. Katz is thrown out. Bregman goes to third on the play. It's 10 to now, LSU. Sixty third run batted in for Katz. Rhymes intentionally walked his last time up. One for two today. the glove of Tobias and into left field. 11 to 2 LSU as Bregman scores. And Rhymes with his 36th run batted in. Now this has officially gotten away from Florida and LSU in line to pick up a series sweep here against the Gators. Showing you why they're so dangerous, too. I mean, yesterday it was Nola who goes complete game shutout. Today, the offense shows up 13 hits already. We're only in the sixth. And here's Christian Ibarra, who really blew this game open last inning with a three run double. That made it 7 to 2 at the time. Lefty Gibson is fouled off. He's had 23 pitches now. Handhold Harrison Gibson out of the Florida pen. In relief of Danny Young, the starter. Yes. And LSU with 11 runs on 13 hits today. Outside. One and two. Christian Ibarra was seven for 14 two weeks ago in that Alabama series. Big day again here today. A couple of hits, a run scored. Three driven in. Popped up. Behind home plate, Gushu flips the mask off, won't have a play. Looking at Tigers Stadium just beyond the batter's eye across the street, the home of the football Tigers. You know, SEC Media Day for football is just a uh, a few months away. It was like every day is SEC <laughs> media day for football. Three balls, two strikes to Ibarra. Hit hard. Tobias can't knock that one down. Skips into left field. Boy, that was smoked. Tobias may have had a play on Ibarra if he fields it cleanly, but he wasn't able to do so. Third hit of the day for Ibarra. 14th of the day for LSU. And Gushu will trot out to the mound to talk to Gibson again. Ty Ross at the plate. The LSU catcher, this is the fourth time he is hitting. As we're in only the bottom of the sixth inning.
Ibarra at first, Rhymes at second. This goes right off of Gibson. Gets to his feet, no play, bases loaded again. Boy, you hope he's okay. That came screaming back to the mound. And remember, the starter today, Danny Young, took one off the mouth last weekend against Tennessee and required 30 stitches to so Carmichael shows up here in the bottom of the sixth inning with the bases loaded and one out. Ty Ross at the plate, the LSU catcher and the seven hole hitter. Down and in. Carmichael was promoted to the top of the rotation in mid-March and even beat Vanderbilt. But uh, tendonitis flared up and he's pitched only once since March 29th. One and one. Carmichael started the year of the bullpen, had five straight scoreless relief appearances and then was promoted to the rotation by Kevin O'Sullivan. The 1-1 one, one to Ross. Now 1-2. and two. Boy, Gibson is going to be hurting tonight. That's going to make for a longer bus ride there. Nine hour bus rides are never a lot of fun anyway. You go nine hour bus ride after potentially getting swept and then you get drilled. That's just a, that's a rough Saturday. That is going to be black and blue I'm sure. Hit well to left. Could be a grand slam. Oh my it's off the scoreboard. Ty Ross. A grand slam home run to left field off the scoreboard here at Alec Box. It's 15 to 2. That just doesn't happen anymore. I mean, years ago, you'd see balls fly out all over the place at the old Alex box. I've never seen anybody hit one off the scoreboard here. Second home run of the weekend. Watch how far this flies. Bang. Think you knew it? A little bat flip on the way down, and watch where it ends up. That is some power. Second time he's hit a home run to left field this weekend. Kid's starting to heat up a little bit for him because all the talent's been there, but now he's really coming on. Interesting to see where somebody. With Alabama that wins 16 innings. Here a grand slam as Jones grounds out. Tyler Moore hitting in the number nine spot. For LSU. Oh, and two. And finally, the inning is over for Florida. 19 time of the year, good power arm. Fastball up to 95 at time for Marsh. Big kid, the challenge this year has just been command with LaMarche. And Vcash Ramjet to lead it off here for Florida. He's over two today. Shambra has moved to left field for LSU. And Chenea now catching for the Tigers. Marsh up and in, one and one. Good start for Eads. Yeah, great Eads start for Eads. Going to pick up his eighth win, provided a miraculous comeback here by the Gators. This has popped up. It's going to get. Out of play, foul.
Florida 25 and 22 coming into the day, so they're going to be just two games over 500. That is, you know, a predicament for the Gators because you have to be over 500 to qualify for the NCAA tournament. You're getting precariously close. It's danger zone yeah. right now. We talked about their last two series. They get Auburn and Georgia to finish it out in the SEC. One down. As Ramjit strikes out. First for LaMarche. Pretty good weekend for Jacoby Jones. We saw the ball he hit out earlier today. Started on Thursday with his home run. Led to an opening day LSU win in this series. And then today. A little bit further than that one. Off the board, out in left field. Watch where this hits. Bang. Grand slam for Jacoby Jones. A lot of flash in that bat. Five for 12 in this series. Eight RBIs. When he gets it, man, it really goes. Josh Tobias up there. He's got a walk at a strikeout today. And the aforementioned Jones throws him out, two down. Jacoby Jones's bat has heated up as the season has gone on, too. When you talked to Paul Maneri earlier in the year, he really liked his speed because he could steal bases. He thought he had a lot of upside, but just hadn't really been consistent enough at the plate. I think we're starting to see that happen now for Jacoby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, we're seeing why everybody is so excited about just the potential that this kid has. Because when it clicks, it is really, really good. Two and out to Bader. Strike out in a fly out today. Now you look at Florida's schedule coming up. And a bus back to Gainesville from Baton Rouge. So they'll take tomorrow off. And then a game Monday and a game Tuesday. They'll play Florida AM and FAU back to back. Now, FAU no slouch. No, that's a all. team that's going to be in a region. Yep. Then host Auburn and at Georgia. Certainly two of the uh, less fearful teams in the SEC in Auburn and Georgia. But, you know, the Gators still have to finish strong. Oh, yeah. To assure that they finish over 500. 3-1. Lash to right, base hit. Harrison Bader is on with two outs here in the seventh. And we're going to get a pinch hitter. Christian Dix to hit for the Gators. Freshman out of Jacksonville stands in. First pitch swinging sends it foul. strike now the way that pulmonary is set up in the bullpen too I mean he's very rested there um, and in a situation like this does he even want to use his frontline bullpen guys like 
Bourgeois and Cotton, or does he give them a day off here today with a 15 to 2 lead this late? I think you try to get a few other guys work if you can, which is yeah. why we're seeing LaMarche in this spot. McCune, it looks like, is up threatening to throw at this point in that LSU bullpen. So Kurt McCune start the series finale last weekend against South Carolina. To left field. Right at Shambra, who is in the game. Quiet seventh for Florida. It's 15 2 Tigers. And Laird will lead it off for LSU here in the seventh. As the Tigers trying to wrap up their seventh SEC series victory of the year. Laird today 0 for 1 a couple of walks and a run scored. Ground ball. And Laird is put out. Tucker Simpson is on the mound now for Florida. Major League Baseball action on ESPN Sunday at 8. It's the West Coast battle. Matt Kemp. And the Dodgers taking on the Giants. Then Monday at 7, Justin Upton and the Braves going against Joey Votto and the Reds. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. Sunday at 8, Monday at 7. This is pitcher number 5 now for Florida. Tucker Simpson, a right-hander. And that hit him. Bregman takes it off the rear end. This one might get him chirping a little bit. First one was in. Second one just about went behind him. Just clipped Bregman on the way back. Paul Maneri uh, didn't look too excited about that one either. Bregman had an RBI double in the fifth and a two run double in the sixth. And now he's on with one out. Alex Edward hitting now for LSU. As we're seeing both teams going to their reserves here in a game that's in control for LSU 15 to 2 bottom of the seventh ball in a strike Alex Edward has seen limited duty again this season for LSU he had a hamstring injury that kept his playing time in check last season See modest numbers this year, getting a chance to swing. Here in the seventh inning. Now one and two. With a win today, LSU will pick up win number 43 on the year. In 49 games. And they'll go to 19 and 5 in the SEC. No and after dropping their first conference series of the season last week, we'll bounce back with a series sweep of Florida. A very good team in SEC play. Yeah. Despite some struggles this year, it's uh, never easy to sweep the Gators. No, it's not. And I would say this is a pretty impressive bounce back, too, if you're LSU. Bregman at first. Here's the 2 2 pitch. And I. And I'm going to call that a foul ball. Hit the knob of the bat. Yep. And Edward didn't even make a move toward first base. His hands and the knob of the bat start going, just spun it right towards it. Yep, got it right off the end.
three and two. So the eleventh appearance of the year for Tucker Simpson. Line drive, base hit. Hit number 17 for LSU. Going to third is Bregman. Runners at the corners again for the Tigers. No matter who they throw up there today, it's just uh, one of those days for the Tigers that they're barreling everything up that they see. Now Shambra will hit for the first time. This is the most hits that a Florida pitching staff has allowed this season. Chris Shambra to hit. Sophomore out of Baton Rouge. You and I had a chance to talk to him at length last year, a weekend removed from a injury that he suffered at Auburn. The went out and tried to make a catch in the outfield and injured his neck, and it was a real scary situation, but he was okay. And Pretty impressive kid. Yeah, we were impressed by him. Real impressive kid. And he was in the start lineup for a lot of the early season this year for LSU. Not playing quite as much right now because it's a shot today. 3 0 pitch. There's a strike. Tucker Simpson. Bases loaded for LSU for the second inning in a row. Ready to take his wax. Freshman from Boca Raton, Florida. Incidentally, LSU has three Florida natives on this roster. They're all catchers. That's the spot. I don't know about you, but my scorecard, an absolute mess. Yeah, not a day to do it in 10. <laughs> 17 hits today for LSU. Called strike on the outside corner, two and one. Now two and two. So with a sweep today, I know you had LSU as a borderline lock for a national seed. What would mess it up for? I mean, it's going to be tough now, especially with their schedule down the stretch. There's a called strike in the outside corner, a strikeout for Simpson as Barish goes down. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think anything. Game one for our last. SEC Thursday night game of the year. Now Chenea to hit. Bases loaded, two outs in the LSU seventh. They got three in the second, four in the fifth, and eight last inning.
Not a lot on that pitch. But it falls in the zone for a strike. It's going to get out of play. Line drive, base hit, right field. This could run all the way to the wall, and it does. Two runs are in. They're going to wave home a third. Bases clearing double for Chinea. And it's 18 to 2 LSU. Top to bottom. I mean, everybody in the lineup, you got pitch hitters coming up. They're delivering. Elevated fastball to Chenea, a little inside out swing, gets the barrel to it, and ends up getting all the way to the wall. Justin Schaefer went over, tried to cut this ball off, but couldn't get there. Three more LSU runs. They've scored 18 in a game, 15 in the last three innings. Huh. This is a fly ball to left field. And Jones is retired after the Grand Slam last inning, but another big run. It's 18 to 2 Tigers. Been a dominant performance offensively on the mound for LSU. They lead it 18 to 2 as we move to the eighth inning. 18 hits today for the Tigers in the series with Florida. They put up a 16 to 2 victory back in 1993. Well, they've already done better than that today, and Florida just hoping to get out of here without any more pieces missing. Uh, they just want to get out of here. Yeah. Just get on their way back. Even if the Gators lose this one, still 12 and 12 in the league with two weekends to go. Richie Martin, the leadoff hitter for Florida. The last again this afternoon, they had four hits in yesterday's game again. Put up a two spot in the first inning, but since then, nothing. Yeah, just nothing since. Only two hits after that first inning. Ball and strike. Now two and one. Martin looking for his first hit of the day and sends this one foul. It's two balls and two strikes. Four years. One of nine players drafted last year. Now a member of the Houston Astros organization, ground ball to first. And Martin is retired. It's Barish who stays in the game defensively at first base, steps on the bat. Casey Turgeon. You know, I mean, nitpicking a little. They're good in that spot. And McCune, who's on the mound, gets another ground ball. Hit hard right at Barish, makes the catch. Tries to step on the bag and double up the plate for Florida. Corey Reed. With two outs here in the Florida eighth. They're down 16 runs. LSU took the first two games. Something unforeseen is going to get a three-game series sweep here today. This one fouled off, two strikes. Ole Miss to close out the SEC schedule. The Thursday game against Ole Miss, a postseason they'd like to forget. Stony Brook ended up knocking him out of the NCAA tournament and went on to the College World Series. Nobody saw that coming. Now this at the entire year only lost one series. That was last week against South Carolina. Reed gets hit and two on.
Hit in the air to left. Shambra's there, and that's going to do it for Florida here in the eighth. College baseball is brought to you by KFC, the amazing taste of KFC original recipe. Now available without the bones. Today tastes no good. And Chase Sapphire preferred. There's more to enjoy. Alongside Kyle Peterson, former Stanford All-American right-hander. I'm Clay Manthick. Can I say former or once you're a Stanford All-American, you just always a Stanford All-American? You're not former, kind of like a Marine. Once a Marine, always a Marine. I think you're former. not a sensitive. I'm, 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 <laughs> you're I feel like a very right. former at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Quite former. Parker Dancio to pitch now for the Gators. This game has felt former for quite a while yeah. now. This has been in hand for LSU since mm, fifth inning, I would say. Over the Tigers, there you see the uh, line on Danceu this year. This is his 16th appearance back toward him. He can't field it. The shortstop, Dent, can't make the play at first. Is uh, uh, give the error to the first baseman, Farnham. And since the middle innings. Because you miss a few. I mean, at least that guy got it right. I still remember what it was. One, two, grounded to third. Tobias, can he turn his third double play? No. And Florida. Dancy was pitcher number six. This one lofted down the line, left field, long run. And not going to make the catch. That's Christian. Bottom of the eighth inning. Foul back. Stays in. Laird going down the line. And that's going to be foul. Situation, obviously, and probably uh, gets a rest today. Back over the mound. That should end the inning with a double play. But it doesn't as Laird beats it out at first. And now Bregman to hit again, and he puts it into left field. Another hit today for Bregman. That's his third. Casey Yoakum. Take strike one. I'm not going to head home a little early today. <laughs> They've seen all they needed to see today from their beloved Tigers. Some rain in Kentucky. That has downgraded the track. Pitch from Dance, who swung on and missed. And that does it for LSU here in the eighth. So Florida coming up in the room by scorebook. It's Brent Bonvillain on for the 16th time, a 136 ERA, but the primary lefty to get them to Chris Cotton in the bullpen. Solid, solid year for Bonvillain. Glenn, Nola, and Eads all quality starts. For LSU this weekend. Four straight complete games. Yesterday, a complete game shut out. Ryan Eads, I thought it was great today. Really found it after giving up two in the first. Gave him six strong innings. A little bit easier to throw when you always put 18 on the board behind you, but Eads went out and pounded the zone, only walked three today. Mike Farman swings at the first pitch, and it's an out. The NBA playoffs continue Sunday on ABC. A couple of game ones at the Grizzlies and the Thunder, the Pacers and the Knicks at 3.30 Eastern on Sunday on ABC. Coverage begins with the Kia NBA countdown at 12.30. Carmelo Anthony against the Celtics had a great series. Now we'll see what he could do in the second round. Florida down to its last two outs. Bonvalan misses outside. Connor Mitchell's at the plate for Florida. That's tap foul. Two one to Mitchell. Here's a strike two and two. Now, if you're pulmonary, looking ahead, based on what you've seen here in recent weeks, 
game one of that regional, who does he start? Glenn. I would bet. I mean, they're going to play a four seed. Uh, you know, one of the reasons he threw McCune last week is to try to get the pitch count up so right. he had something to choose from, left hand or right hand, or depending on matchup. But I think those are the two that you do choose from, either Kurt McCune or Cody Glenn. Hit toward the hole, knocked down by Barish. No play. So Mitchell is on. And Brady Roberson will pinch it now for Florida. From Royal Palm Beach, Florida, another freshman. I said it before how young this Florida team is. See the numbers on Roberson. Hits with a man on and he hits it hard to left field. Past Yoakum at third base. Two on and one out here for Florida in the ninth. And now Christian Dix will hit for the first time. How about left fielder Christian Dix? I stand corrected. Dix hitting for the second time. He hit as a pinch hitter for the first time in the seventh. You're forgiven. Yes. Thank you. you kept a little, little neater scorecard. You wouldn't have to worry about <laughs> things like that. There you see it. Flew out his first time up. Flew out to left, in fact. Double play depth for the LSU defense trying to turn a double play finish this one up. They get the ground ball they're looking for but it's going to leak into left field for a base hit and now they're loaded for the Gators. And Pulmonary seen enough. Bonvalan has loaded the bases. Richie Martin at the plate, the LS, or excuse me, the Florida leadoff man. He's got the bases loaded. Martin has not homered yet this year. We've already seen one grand slam today. That was for Jacoby Jones of LSU. That was in that big eight run sixth inning. Scott Klein has had a tight strike zone most of the day and much to the chagrin of this LSU crowd. 16 run game with one out in the ninth and he's not expanded at this point either. <laughs> one and two to Richie Martin. Klein drive base hit. And a run is going to score for Florida. RBI single for Richie Martin. It's 18 to 3. Thirteenth run batted in for Martin. And Turgeon will hit for himself here in the two hole. A couple of hits today for Turgeon. Nick Rumbelow, according to uh, the LSU coaching staff has the best breaking ball out of the pen. But he hasn't been able to get anybody out yet. Here's going to score another run as it's a base hit for Turgeon that scores one. 18 to 4. Three hits on the day for Turgeon. Single to get things going in the first one. Four day. <laughs> I mean, I'm Polish. I should have got that one right. <laughs> Line to right field. This is going to score 
at least one more. Yep. And it's 18 to 5. What do you think's going through the mind of Paul Maneri about now? Is he going to have to get Cotton going? Yeah, I tell you what's going through his mind is I didn't think I was going to have two guys in the ball game in the ninth inning and another one that maybe has to go play catch and potentially warm up. Just want to get this thing over with as soon as you can. Cotton's still in the dugout. They've got Nate Fury loosening up now in the LSU pen. Corey Reed at the plate for Florida. Gators have scored three times here in the ninth. Reed, a 278 hitter, a couple of runs batted in on the year. And he calls time. Another well hit ball backhanded and they're going to go to third to get a four shot. Another run will score as Martin crosses the plate. Turgeon is out at third on the fielder's choice. But Bregman who had that play in front of him made the right decision going to third. He did not he kind of surprised Casey Yoakum was playing third base. Bregman going to that side the only chance that you're really going to have is just to take that lead runner. Well not the lead runner but the runner moving to third base the throws so much easier. Watch him when he goes backhand side and thought of it right away and Yokum had to scramble just a little bit to get all the way back there. Ends up applying the tag. But another really good play by the freshman. And just heads up baseball knowing where to throw it. So the Gators down to their last out. Zach Powers hitting for himself here in the number five spot. The DH is 0 for 4 today. 18 to 6 now. LSU one out away from a series sweep. Strike called 1 and 1. And Florida. In jeopardy of losing for the fourth straight time. They also lost the series finale against Tennessee last weekend. This would be the second time this season that they're going to suffer a series sweep. Florida Gulf Coast got to him for three straight. Back in February. Two balls and a strike. And it's three and one. And he walked it. Farman to hit again to center. This should end it. And LSU sweeps the series against the Gators. 18 to 6 is the final. Pretty good work by LSU. Shows you whether one of the top teams in the country. 43 and 6 for the Tigers right now. And for Florida, they drop to 25 and 23. They've got some work to do to get into that NCAA tournament. Coming up next. The 2012 Reebok Women's CrossFit Games. For Kyle Peterson and her entire crew on Clay Matvick, we say so long from Baton Rouge. Big win today for LSU.